Hey guys and welcome to this week's installment of Tuesdays with Lauri. My name is Lauri Laukkanen and I'm one of the editors at SLR Lounge. You can also find me on Facebook at Lauri Laukkanen Photography. Today we're going to be taking a look at my photograph titled Candyland. We're going to take a look at how the photograph was lit and we're going to talk about how we can add interest into our studio shots by playing around with the colors, uh, adding some textures and using creative blurs. But with that said, let's get started. So before we get to the photograph itself, I would like to give credit to the people that helped me create these photographs. Uh, the hair, makeup, as well as the styling were all done by one person, uh, Yasmina Korhonen, who I believe, at least in my opinion, is one of the best makeup artists in Finland at the moment. And the model in this photograph is Taroha, Taruhahta. They were amazing and without them this photograph would not have worked out. So uh, all the credit goes to these people. But now let's get to, down to business. Uh, let's talk about how this photograph was lit. Uh, let's open up my new lighting diagram from here and let's start creating. So what we did was we used actually a white wall instead of a white backdrop. And the reason for this was I knew that I would like, I would want to switch the color or change the color of the background in post. And that way I wanted, instead of having a, like a clean white background, what I wanted was a gradient kind of grayish background so that it would be easier for me to change up the hue later in Photoshop. So what we did was let's, I'm going to create a white backdrop here now. But just uh, remember this backdrop is actually a wall, a white wall. We positioned our model quite far away from the backdrop. Uh, so we're going to take a subject from here, a woman. And we're going to position her quite far away from the wall. And then this photograph was lit uh, using a soft box. So we're going to take from here and go down the soft boxes, and the soft box from here. This was lit kind of like a butterfly, so coming straight down in front of our model. And our model was kind of facing the soft box. So this is pretty close to how it was. I was shooting the photograph from here. So we're going to add the camera, angle it as well. And then to fill in the shadows on the other side, what I actually did, instead of using a reflector, what I did, I set up an other soft box, which I did not fire. I just placed it really close to our subject. And that, because it has the white material in front, it also acts kind of like a reflector. And that way it filled in the shadows a bit. And this is how we lit the scene. And as you can see, we don't really have any light firing at the background or the wall that we used and that way the background stayed kind of grayish instead of pure white and that way in Photoshop it was easier for me to switch the color or the hue of the background to a more greenish bluish tone. So this is how we lit the scene and now let's go to Photoshop and talk about how we can add interest into these kind of a little bit boring clean white uh, studio shots here. So this is the image before any editing was done. Here you can see the background is not white even though the wall was white uh, but it's more grayish. And uh, here the first folder that you can see I have a few layers here. It's I called it the retouch and the first coloring layer or that's where I have the first retouch and coloring layers. So if we just turn it on, you'll see I already changed the hue of the background. Uh, I cleaned up the skin, got rid of the stray hairs and uh, did kind of the retouching and the first coloring. Uh, let's turn these off and put them on one by one so you can see in this first group when we turned it on, turn it on, it's just a basic skin retouch. 
On the second uh, group, what we have here is I have a dodge and, two dodge and burn layers. I use the curves adjustment panel when I dodge and burn. So that's what we have here. And then in the third group, that's where I have the colors. And we'll turn the, these on one by one so you can see. The first thing I have here is I change the hue of the background to a more greenish tone as you can see here. Not that visible of an effect yet, but it's the beginning. Then what we have here is an iris blur. Uh, blur, uh, blur. I can't talk. I can't talk today. So what I have here is an iris blur. So what you can, as you can see, if you look at the hair, for example, here, I just blurred uh, some areas of the image using the iris blur and you can get the iris blur by going down to filter uh oh actually i need to select the layer so you can see filter blur and i iris blur so it's here then i added some noise to the blurred areas in order to make the blur a bit more natural looking and then here we have a hue and saturation layer which will add a bit more green into the background. Then I have a texture and by adding a texture you can kind of create more interest into the clean background. I think it adds a whole new dimension when you add some uh, texture into the background. But I wouldn't go crazy as you can see here it's not a very uh, harsh effect it's just a subtle texture in the background so that it creates a bit more interest into the photograph then i have a vignette here which helps with uh, darkening up the background and kind of that way we get the green uh, a bit more visible in the background and then i have two layers that are actually just stray hair fixes and stuff like that so those are nothing special there so this folder here retouch and first color let's turn it on and off once more on and off skin retouch and the first coloring then i have here if you look at the eyelashes here now i just brighten them up a bit using the curves adjustment panel and the mask here's the mask itself so as you can see i'm just brightening up the eyelashes then i have a stray hair fix nothing major it's, it's just this little stray hair here which I noticed so I got rid of it and now here I set, uh, added a bit of saturation into the face to kind of make the makeup pop but again a very subtle effect you don't want to go overboard with this kind of stuff so we're gonna click here you'll see it's a very very subtle effect most invisible probably in the green areas here if you look but I've kept it really subtle so you really don't even notice it that much. Then here's a layer where I changed the background hue from green into a bit more bluish tone. This is the tone that worked nicely with the makeup here and the candy around here. So I thought I'd change up the background from green to a bit more bluish tone. Somewhere between blue and green. Then I noticed that the hair was a bit too saturated uh, in my opinion at least so I decided to desaturate it a bit and that's what I did here as you can see if you look at the hair it's just desaturated it was a bit too yellow in my opinion then I, an I added another vignette and this time just a pretty random vignette if you look at the layer mask just some of the areas around here here I decided to darken up a bit just to add a bit more interest again so I, I put it on and off you'll see the vignette here and again when I add a vignette uh, the dark areas are the areas that people don't really focus on so then people really focus more on our model's face instead of again looking around at the edges of the photograph then I kind of felt that the neck and the skin around here down here was a bit too saturated again again it kind of pu pulled me away from looking at the model's face so again what i did i just desaturated a bit so if you look at the neck now 
I just desaturated the brown colors down. So again, all my focus goes on our model's face instead of the neck, for example. And the last very subtle effect, I'll show you the layer mask, you'll see where I applied it. Mostly on the candy, the candy, the ball, a little candy around her face, just to add a bit of vibrance into the colors so that they again pop a little bit more. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, we went from this a bit boring uh, white clean photo to this, which is a bit more artistic, at least in my opinion, and a little bit more interesting in a way when you don't have the white clean background, but you have these colors that really work together quite nicely. You have this texture which adds a bit more interest into the photograph. And then uh, you have still these blurs that help you uh, or help that help the viewer to focus really on our subject's face instead of uh, wandering around the whole photograph. Yeah, but that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this week's installment of Tuesdays with Lauri and as always if you have any questions or requests for future episodes just leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you all out. But with that said thank you for watching and see you again next Tuesday. Bye. Thank you.